Neural networks have complex weight structures, lots of layers, different activation functions, all these sorts of things. How do you know exactly how to structure your neural network? And there's no easy answer to this. It's not like I tell you, put this many weight uh, layers here, this many there. Often what you will do is you'll use transfer learning. You're going to start with a already predefined structure for the, the neural network. And we'll certainly, we, we saw an example of that when we were looking at the image neural network. You can take these structures from ResNet and others. You can either fine tune them, take the weights that were there already before, or you can start and train it completely from scratch using that existing layer structure. But let's look at some of the options that you have for structuring a PyTorch neural network, at least the ones that we make use of in this course. There's certainly more than I'm showing you here, but these are the ones that we're using in this in this course. So these are these choices that you make are referred to as hyperparameters and you can use various search techniques. They're computationally expensive generally, so they'll take a long time, but you can use like Bayesian optimization to try to tune these hyperparameters to your particular application. We'll see that in the very next part. But what we have here are some of the hyperparameters that you may want to deal with. The number of hidden layers and the counts in each. Often, you will start with a larger number of hidden neurons and, and kind of almost pyramid style, come in and have fewer of them as you get closer to the output neural networks. And this somewhat makes sense. You're dealing with very big sort of concepts at first and then fine tuning down, down, down until what you're going to actually be dealing with. Not so much fine tuning, but just narrowing the concept down. Fine tuning refers to when you take existing weights and you further train on your unique data. Activation functions, typically you'll be using the rectified linear unit uh, for the hidden layers, but there are other ones. There's leaky rectified linear units and, and others that might give you some better results. You'll need to experiment there. The activation function on the output layer, that's usually pretty well defined for you. It's going to be linear if you're doing regression, or it's going to be perhaps a sigmoid if you're doing a binary classification, or a softmax if you're doing a multi-class classification. You might put regularization into here, L1 and L2. Dropout in particular is the ones that you see a lot in these sorts of neural networks. Batch normalization can be done at each layer to make sure that the inputs to those layers are staying into a, a reasonable area that they size, that they can be scaled into by this batch normalization. Also training parameters. Training parameters, something like the learning rate. These are really just about how your neural network trains and they don't really live on past the training phase other than that they affected how accurate of weights you were probably able to get into this. Activation, again, be aware of what activation functions you are using. ReLU, like I said, is very popular. Regularization, L1 and L2, I haven't seen that used as much in neural networks, but it certainly can be. You'll most likely be using dropout. I have a listing here of all of the activation functions, and I really rather like this cheat sheet that I have linked here that shows you kind of the structures of, of each of these. So this is just the overview of some of the hyperparameters you can deal with for the neural networks. There are certainly more. In the next video, we're going to look at how to use Bayesian optimization to optimize a few of these. Thank you for watching this video. And if it was useful, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future parts of this course. Thank you.